Do you remember the morning of April 21st, 2010? I'll never forget that morning. By 8 a.m., my phone was ringing off the hook, and my email inbox quickly filled the capacity. You see, at around 10 p.m. Central Time the evening before, there was a tragic explosion in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico. Described as a sonic boom, the rumble of the explosion was heard and felt by three tuna fishermen aboard the 31-foot Ramblin' Wreck nearly 20 miles away. And the massive fireball caused by the explosion was visible as far as 50 miles away on the Louisiana Gulf Coast. A semi-submersible rig called the Deepwater Horizon was drilling BP's Macondo Prospect on Mississippi Canyon Block 252 in the Deepwater Gulf of Mexico. Steve Bertone, the rig's chief engineer, reports he was reading a book in bed when he heard a strange noise. That sound grew louder and louder, and he felt the rig begin to shake violently. Bertone heard a loud boom and reported the smell and taste of some kind of fuel in the air just as the lights went out. You see, oil and natural gas trapped in underground reservoirs are under tremendous geologic pressure, and those natural forces have to be carefully managed to prevent a blowout. Blowouts are a driller's worst nightmare. However, a blowout is exactly what destroyed the Deepwater Horizon on the evening of April 20th. Natural gas, under enormous pressure in a field located in mile deep water, entered the wellbore with devastating consequences. A volatile mixture of oil, natural gas, and concrete erupted onto the platform of the Deepwater Horizon, igniting the rig. This tragedy resulted in the deaths of 11 rig workers and seriously injured another 17. I was inundated with calls, interview requests, and emails in the weeks after the tragedy because energy investors were panicked. Shares in BP, the operator of the well, and one of the world's largest energy firms, plummeted more than 20% in the two weeks following the spill. By late June, with the stock off by more than 50%, many pundits were predicting bankruptcy for BP, long considered among the industry's best capitalized firms. President Obama declared a moratorium on deep water drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. And many pundits in the financial media declared the era of deep water oil and gas exploration over worldwide. However, if there's one lesson you must learn to be successful, it's this. Panic is an investor's worst enemy. You must avoid the influences of fear and greed on your investing decisions like the plague. Yet, there is good news. Emotional markets offer investors with a steady hand the opportunity to make truly serious money. The constant barrage of sensationalist headlines from the financial media and newsletter publishers is making this contrarian strategy even more profitable. Keep watching this video through to the end and I'll show you how to turn the hype and sensationalism of the modern 24-hour news media into profits. I'll outline all of the specifics of one of my top energy stock picks for 2014. And I'll explain how to gain access to my latest reports and research absolutely risk-free. By now, you're probably asking yourself, why should I listen to you? Hello, my name is Elliot Yu. I'm the co-founder and chief analyst for Energy and Income Advisor, a comprehensive financial research service dedicated to uncovering the best income and growth investment opportunities in the energy industry. Co-founder Roger Conrad and I are not new to the financial advisory and research business. In fact, we have more than 40 years of combined experience as analysts and editors of some of the largest circulation financial publications in the United States. Our financial advisories have consistently been highly rated by the industry's only independent rating service, the Holbert Financial Digest. You may also recognize us from our frequent appearances on CNBC, Bloomberg TV, and Canada's Business News Network. We've been quoted in a number of major publications, including Barron's, Forbes, The New York Times, and The Washington Post. We're sought after speakers at investment conferences around North America, and we currently serve tens of thousands of investors worldwide through our financial research firm, Capitalist Times. I've dedicated my career to analyzing and identifying profitable investment opportunities in the energy sector. The official program of the 2008 
G8 Summit held in Hokkaido, Japan, even called me the world's leading energy strategist. And over the past decade, I've created three of the industry's largest and most successful energy-focused financial research and advisory services. My coverage universe includes groups as diverse as the big oil majors, refiners, high-yield, tax-advantaged master limited partnerships, uranium mining firms, and royalty trusts. You may also recognize me for some of the high-profile energy market calls I've made over the years. In fact, I decided to make this video today to give you my latest, up-to-date advice on one of my most successful stock recommendations, a high-yield offshore contract driller called Sea Drill. Less than a month after the Macondo spill, I pounded the table on Sea Drill at the Las Vegas Money Show. I told investors to buy now, locking in a double-digit yield on Sea Drill stock. I sincerely wanted show attendees to take advantage of the widespread panic and outrageous disinformation promoted and spread by the financial and 24-hour news media. My Sea Drill call was a huge success. The stock soared 175.7% between May 14, 2010 and the end of September last year, a gain of over 35% annualized. Listen, the financial media and most newsletter publishers can't afford a slow news day. They must make even the most mundane twists and turns in the broader market exciting, or viewers and readers would simply turn away. At the height of the financial crisis in 2008, billionaire investing legend Warren Buffett wrote an op-ed piece for the New York Times. In the article, Buffett passed along one simple rule that governs his buying decisions. Be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful. In other words, to make big profits in the stock market, you must be willing to lean against conventional wisdom and avoid falling prey to the emotions of the crowd. Unfortunately, that's the exact opposite of what newsletter publishers and the mainstream financial media want. That's right, the media and marketers in the newsletter business profit by appealing to your emotions, your fears, and your greed. The ugly conspiracy is that they actively promote a sense of panic and fear because that's what attracts attention, readership, and traffic to websites. Please pay attention to their machinations. Sensationalism sells investment publications and attracts advertisers, yet emotional arguments rarely represent sound investment advice. Fear-mongering and mindless hype push investors to miss out on some of the most profitable growth and income opportunities for your portfolio. That's not what I desire for you. Later on in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to avoid the pitfalls of fear-based investing and use the crowd's emotions to your advantage. But first, I promise you my latest advice on high-yield deepwater contract driller Sea Drill. My successful call in Sea Drill back in 2010 means that my name is still associated with the stock. In fact, I'm asked about Sea Drill more than almost any other stock in my coverage universe. In the September 29th, 2013 issue of Energy and Income Advisor, I advised subscribers to take profits off the table in Sea Drill. That call saved Energy and Income Advisor subscribers some serious money. Sea Drill shares have tumbled over 30% from their September highs to their March 2014 lows. However, I believe there's more downside to come. Look, Four years ago, I believed that while the Macondo spill was a tragedy, the risk of a long-term moratorium on deepwater drilling was mindlessly overhyped. Pundits making that call were far more interested in attracting attention than in communicating real value. At the time of the Macondo spill, more than one-third of oil production from the lower 48 states came from offshore fields, and about 75% of that total was from the deepwater gulf. Do you know what would happen if one-third of U.S. domestic oil production were suddenly threatened? Make no mistake about it, crude oil prices would soar to well over $120 per barrel, perhaps even higher, sending gasoline and diesel prices over $5 per gallon. Soaring energy prices would have undoubtedly tipped the economy back into recession. Would any politician from any party want to be blamed for soaring energy costs? 
Cutting through all the hype and sensationalism in the financial media, here's the real story for the energy sector after the Macondo spill. The Deepwater Horizon oil rig, destroyed during the 2010 oil spill, was nearly a decade old. I believe that a key piece of safety equipment that could have prevented the spill wasn't powerful enough to handle the pressure of the Macondo well. A blowout preventer, or BOP, is used to automatically seal a well at the first sign the operator is losing control. The crucial insight was this. Producers would increasingly favor newer rigs with far more powerful BOPs to enhance safety. That's where C-Drill really stood out. Virtually all of C-Drill's deepwater drilling rigs were built after 2008 and equipped with state-of-the-art equipment and safety devices. C-Drill's young fleet was exactly what producers would be looking for as soon as deepwater drilling activity reaccelerated. And in the short term, Cedro was safe because it had zero rigs operating in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico in 2010 and absolutely no exposure to the U.S. moratorium. Here's what happened. The U.S. stopped issuing permits for wells after the Macondo oil spill and forced producers to cease drilling existing permitted wells as soon as they felt it was safe to do so. Predictably, deepwater activity collapsed. But sooner than most expected, reason triumphed over emotion. By mid-October of 2010, the moratorium on deepwater drilling in the Gulf had been lifted, and after some initial hiccups, the pace of permitting began to pick up by the time of the spill's one-year anniversary. By 2012, most producers and services companies in the region were saying that Gulf drilling activity and revenues from the region were already back above their pre macondo peaks. Permitting activity was at new all-time highs in the region, and the deepwater bears were proven to be dead wrong. While I'm proud of the calls I've made over the years, I'm not telling you this story today to boast or brag. In just a few minutes, I'll reveal a simple blueprint for getting off the fear merry-go-round, including all of the details of one of my top stock picks for 2014 that I consider a screaming buy now. Keep watching, and I'll tell you how you can obtain a risk-free trial to my service, Energy and Income Advisor, including my latest report detailing one of my top income recommendations. This stock currently offers a yield well over 6%, and management is on track to boost that payout by as much as 15% annualized. Better still, it's a great stock to buy now because it's badly misunderstood and isn't widely covered by the financial pundits. Over the next few quarters, I'm looking for this company to make a series of acquisitions that will put the stock on investors' radar screen. Once that happens, the opportunity will have passed, and it'll be too late to jump aboard. Later on in this video, I'll tell you how to join us for an exclusive online event, a service that Roger and I pioneered nearly a decade ago. It's the most popular feature of our advisory. Simply put, we're giving you the opportunity to ask us any question about any stock, sector, or economic trend that you're interested in. And we don't just cherry pick the questions we want to answer. At last month's exclusive online event, we were online for well over four hours and answered close to 100 questions. Does your advisor do that for you? In fact, we answered every question we were posed during the event and we're about to do the same this month. If you act now to try our service risk-free, I'll rush you the exact details of how you can participate in this exclusive subscriber-only event right away. Please consider taking action today to gain access to our report and exclusive subscriber-only online event. Keep watching through to the end for more details of our service, Energy and Income Advisor, and some of the risk-free, exclusive offers we've prepared for you. Before I reveal two simple tactics for turning the crowd's emotions and media hype into profits, let's get back to sea drill and the deepwater drilling market. Two simple charts I'll reveal in a moment explain why I see more downside ahead for sea drill and why I'm advising energy and income advisor subscribers to avoid this stock. You see, contract drillers like sea drill are in the business of leasing drilling rigs to oil and gas producers for a daily fee known as a day rate. The big customers for contract drillers are major integrated oil companies 
like ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP, Shell, and Total, as well as national oil companies like Petrobras in Brazil. When these big oil companies are boosting capital spending and increasing drilling activity, demand for offshore rigs rises, putting upward pressure on day rates so the drillers make serious money. That brings me to one of the most important charts in this entire video, the one graph that explains my bearish take on sea drill. Look at this chart of capital spending by the world's 12 largest publicly traded oil and gas producers. The chart includes U.S. super oils like ExxonMobil and Chevron, as well as state-sponsored producers like Petrobras of Brazil. As you can see, these behemoths boasted total capital spending by more than $100 billion between 2010 and 2013. Total spending from the world's 12 largest producers skyrocketed from $250 billion to over $350 billion per year over just a three-year period. However, the world's largest producers face a huge problem with serious implications for the drillers and global oil prices. That brings us to my second key chart showing total oil and gas production from the same 12 super oils. Even with a massive surge in spending, total production from these 12 super oils has actually been falling since 2010. Believe me, investors aren't too happy about this, especially since some regard these 12 super oils as the least volatile stocks in the energy business. Investors in some of these names are about to become even less pleased as soaring capital spending coupled with weak production growth threatens dividend payouts and earnings growth despite high global oil and gas prices. Against that alarming backdrop, it's hardly a surprise that several producers have decided to take a break from drilling to reevaluate the efficiency of their capital spending plans. The first major producer to blink was France-based Total. At its September 2013 Analyst Day, the company introduced plans to reduce its capital spending on exploration and development in 2014. Then, Royal Dutch Shell made a truly shocking announcement. Late last year, Shell pre-announced fourth quarter earnings that fell about $2 billion short of analyst consensus estimate. Management attributed this shortfall to soaring capital expenditures for finding and developing new oil and gas resources. You see, the company's exploration and production bill hit $42.6 billion last year, a huge jump from the $26.3 billion it spent in 2011. Shell further announced it would focus its attention on costs and improving returns on the capital it spends. Read between the lines. Shell's new focus on returns and costs spells a sharp reduction in spending on exploration and development. Here's the bottom line. Less spending on exploration and development means softening demand for deepwater drilling rigs, such as those owned by Sea Drill. However, that's only half the story, and the outlook for the drillers gets even worse. You see, just as demand for rigs falls, the supply of new rigs is growing. Several new deepwater rigs coming out of shipyards haven't yet secured contracts to perform drilling work. The rising supply of rigs and falling demand can mean only one thing, severe downside pressure on the driller's bread and butter, day rates. And another shoe is about to drop. So far, the weakness in day rates has been confined to the market for deepwater drilling rigs. However, my research suggests the rot is spreading to shallow water rigs known as jackups. The weakness in day rates for the jackup rigs will be apparent by the third quarter of this year. Sea Drill owns a large fleet of jackups and is set to suffer another hit once the crowd catches on to this developing trend. I don't have enough time in this video to go through all the details of what this means for each of the contract drillers, including how far Sea Drill shares could fall and when I believe there will be a golden opportunity to buy this high yield stock. However, I have included all of the gory details in a comprehensive report packed with details on Sea Drill available to Energy and Income Advisor subscribers. Act today to get access to our detailed report on deepwater drillers with a risk-free trial subscription to Energy and Income Advisor. 
And don't forget, our detailed issue covering the deepwater drillers also includes details of one of our latest high yield recommendations. This stock has a yield over 6% and no exposure to the vicious cycle of stagnant demand and rising supply that's crushing stocks like Seadrill. Even better, I believe this company will actually profit from the current downturn in deepwater day rates. The driller's current pain will accelerate this high yield stock's acquisition strategy, powering 15% plus annualized growth in its payout over the next three years. Once the crowd catches on to that growth potential, the opportunity will have passed, and it'll be too late to jump aboard. Keep watching, and I'll tell you how you can obtain a risk-free trial to our service, Energy and Income Advisor, including our latest report detailing one of our top income recommendations. In a few minutes, I'll tell you how to take advantage of risk-free, exclusive offers we've prepared for you. Before I do, I promise to reveal my two simple tactics for turning the hype and sensationalism of the financial media into serious profits. I also promised to give you all the details of one of my top energy stock picks for 2014. So let's get started with my first tactic for turning hype into profits and avoiding the pitfalls of fear-based investing. Tactic number one, follow the big picture trends. Earlier in this video, I explained how the financial media and newsletter publishers use panic and sensationalism to attract attention and traffic to their websites, how hype and panic are good for the publishers, but bad news for your portfolio, and how the media must make the market's most mundane twists and turns exciting or viewers and readers would turn away. So here's the secret. The media's focus on meaningless minutiae forces many investors to lose sight of some truly powerful long-term trends. Newsletter publishers and the financial media focus on noise and hype. However, truly successful investors make serious profits in long-term trends. Here's an example. A powerful trend that's driving a hidden renaissance for the U.S. economy. A trend that's making our country safer and less dependent on expensive imports from politically shaky regions of the world. An advantage that countries like Germany, Japan, and yes, even China can't touch. We call it Energy Liberty Day. Listen, just five years ago, the U.S. produced about 5 million barrels of oil per day and imported more than 10 million barrels per day. Just 10 years ago, I attended an energy conference hosted by the U.S. Department of Energy in Washington, D.C. The main topic? America's need to import more liquefied natural gas LNG to meet rising demand. In 2004, U.S. natural gas production was plummeting, but demand was soaring. However, the outlook for U.S. energy production has completely changed since that time. Did you know that the U.S. is the world's largest producer of natural gas? In fact, last year, the U.S. produced more natural gas than the entire Middle East. And in 2013, the U.S. also overtook Saudi Arabia to become the world's largest producer of crude oil and liquid hydrocarbons. In 2005, the U.S. imported about one-third of its energy needs. Yet, by the end of this decade, the United States will be truly energy independent. The key to America's Energy Liberty Day is simple. A rapid jump in production of oil and natural gas from so-called shale fields. Fields like the Bakken Shale in North Dakota, the Eagleford Shale in Southern Texas, and the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania. Here's how to profit. There's a new technology for drilling in shale fields that helps producers drill more wells with fewer drilling rigs. This technology radically reduces the cost of drilling shale wells and reduces the environmental impact of drilling in shale fields. It's called pad drilling. You see, in the past, producers would drill a single well and then disassemble their drilling rig, load the rig onto a truck, and move it to a new drilling location. Drilling rigs used in shale fields are massive pieces of equipment, and it can take a day or more to prepare a rig to be moved and then truck it to a new location. However, with pad drilling, producers drill multiple wells from a single drilling pad location. There's less disruption to the landscape because dozens of wells can be drilled from a single pad. 
and drillers can move the rig as little as 10 to 20 feet between wells, eliminating the need to break down rigs for transport and dramatically cutting drill times. So how do you move a massive drilling rig between pad locations? Good question, and for the answer, watch this. This is a walking rig. Using massive hydraulic feet, this rig can literally walk in any direction. It's capable of moving 10 to 15 feet in about 45 minutes. The average time spent between completing one well and starting another is just two to three hours. That brings me to our top pick for pad drilling, Patterson UTI, trading under the symbol P-T-E-N. The company owns a fleet of about 300 onshore drilling rigs, some booked under long-term contracts at fixed day rates, while others are traded ad hoc on the spot market. In 2008 and 2009, as commodity prices were crushed amid the financial crisis, Patterson was particularly hard hit. You see, Patterson owned a large fleet of old rigs that aren't powerful enough to drill in the shale fields like the Bakken and Marcellus. In fact, at the beginning of 2009, 75% of Patterson's rigs were outdated mechanical rigs, completely incapable of drilling in shale fields. But Patterson learned its lesson, and management set out to renew its rig fleet, replacing old mechanical rigs with newer Apex rigs, ideal for drilling in shale. While only about 60% of Patterson's fleet of rigs was working at the end of last year, more than 95% of its Apex rigs had contracts. And Apex rigs earn far higher margins than older, less capable rigs. Even better, Patterson is the company behind the Apex walking rig I showed you just a moment ago. The rig that can walk between pad drilling locations, dramatically cutting well drill times and costs, while reducing the impact on the environment. Patterson UTI still trades at a reasonable valuation, and we believe it's a strong buy right now as they accelerate construction of Apex walking rigs. So that brings us to my second simple tactic for turning hype and sensationalism in the financial media into cold, hard cash. Tactic number two, avoid hype and think boring. Ben Graham is considered by many to be the father of value investing. Billionaire investing legend Warren Buffett considers Graham one of his mentors. Buffett even called Graham's book, The Intelligent Investor, by far the best investing book ever written. Now that's high praise from one of the world's most successful investors of all time. Graham once said that anyone paying more than 20 times earnings for a stock should be prepared to lose money in the long run. So what do you think Graham would have thought about Tesla Motors? Tesla is widely considered the leader in electric cars, and I have to admit, their cars are beautiful. But Tesla trades at over 300 times 2013 earnings, and close to 150 times projected 2014 earnings. The stock even trades at over 12 times revenues. Bottom line, for you to make any real money in Tesla, the firm's business and execution have to be absolutely perfect. Listen, the world isn't perfect. Tesla's Model S is an exciting car, but it costs $100,000, and other luxury car makers are introducing competing products. For example, the BMW i3 and i8 are both electric cars that will compete with Tesla's models. More competition, especially from an entrenched competitor like BMW, spells falling profit margins. And then there's a Tesla Gen 3, scheduled to be introduced in 2017 as a mass market car. Most pundits bullish on Tesla use the Gen 3 to justify the stock's nosebleed valuation. But ask yourself this, how many consumers are going to buy a $40,000 to $50,000 Gen 3 over a fuel efficient gasoline model at close to half that price? How many consumers are willing to put up with the reduced range of electric vehicles compared to gasoline model. Electric cars are going to be a tough sell in the mass market. Don't buy the Tesla hype. However, 
There is a trend underway in the auto business that's poised to make investors real money hand over fist. You see, Ford Motor recently unveiled its 2015 model of the F-150 pickup truck, the best-selling vehicle in the U.S. This is the first standard-sized pickup truck on the market that's likely to achieve fuel efficiency of 30 miles per gallon. That's up from 23 miles per gallon for its most efficient 2014 model F-150. Here's how Ford accomplished this dramatic jump in fuel efficiency. You see, the global auto industry consumes about 100 million tons of metal per year. Around 87 million of those tons are steel. And just 12.5 million tons are aluminum. However, that's about to change dramatically, as the new F-150 is nearly 25% aluminum compared to 8% for older model trucks. That's only the beginning, as Ford plans to phase in greater use of aluminum across its product line and is spending billions to retool its factories accordingly. GM and other competitors are now following suit, announcing aluminum models of some of their most popular cars and trucks. Aluminum is 10 to 40 percent lighter than steel, and Ford's new F-150 is a full 750 pounds lighter than the 2014 model. That weight loss accounts for the truck's higher fuel efficiency. Listen, it's only a matter of time before demand for aluminum from the automobile industry surges, powering the shares of her favorite aluminum smelter sharply higher and making you some serious money. Not only is this under-the-radar small-cat play benefiting from surging aluminum demand, it's also benefiting from America's low natural gas and electricity prices. You see, smelting aluminum consumes massive amounts of power, and our favorite smelter is quietly renegotiating key electric supply contracts. Lower prices equal a surge in profit margins. In fact, thanks to America's Energy Liberty Day, our favorite U.S.-based aluminum smelter has a truly massive cost advantage over producers in other parts of the world. Best of all, trading at just 80% of annual revenues and 16 times 2015 earnings estimates, this stock is a steal, trading at current levels in the teens. Why buy an overhyped momentum stock like Tesla at 12 times sales and hope electric car technology adoption meets expectations, when you can buy an under-the-radar gem like our play on aluminum at a discount to sales? It's time to buy right now, as we see 40 to 60% upside over the next 6 to 12 months. We'll tell you all the details of our favorite aluminum pick when you sign up for a risk-free one-year subscription to Energy and Income Advisor. Small cap names like our favorite aluminum play can move fast, so act now to get your free risk-free trial subscription to Energy and Income Advisor. In this video, I've told you about a couple of stocks to avoid and a couple of powerful investment themes we see ahead. Yet that's only the beginning of what we're offering you if you sign up today for a risk-free trial of Energy and Income Advisor. We'll tell you about a small company in California with a 12% yield that's producing oil from the remains of fossilized algae. We'll even tell you about a company in one of America's most hated industry groups that's already making serious cash for our subscribers and benefiting from low U.S. energy prices. Listen, this video only gives you a small taste of what Energy and Income Advisor has to offer. Act now to buy a subscription to Energy and Income Advisor and try us out for 30 days. Ask any question you like on our online monthly chat. Check out our model portfolios, offering recommendations for both growth and income investors. And read our latest reports on important topics like liquefied natural gas, U.S. energy independence, master limited partnerships, and royalty trusts. If you don't believe it's worth every dime of the subscription price, cancel in the first 30 days to receive a full refund, no questions asked. And for viewers today, we're offering Energy and Income Advisor at our special introductory price. For those buying an annual subscription, we'll even throw in a one-year trial subscription to Capitalist Times Premium, a $99 value, absolutely free. Here's to your wealth. To start your risk-free trial, please click the Subscribe Now button below this video and join us today.